Hey guys, I'm at it again. In case you don't know, I absolutely love Boolean modifiers. I think they're the best thing to actually ever hit the market. I've got some cool stuff I made. Let's see if I can find this real quick. Oh, that's going to be over here under my bull draw. I think version 17. I got a lot of... <laughs> I got a lot of iterations of these things because it just takes a lot to uh, make them. This is the basic bull box. This is the little thing that I came up with to kind of help guys, uh, you guys just kind of procedurally do some stuff, if you will. And it's pretty cool. It actually runs pretty good. I like it a lot. Uh, it's pretty fun. You can shade smooth, shade auto smooth, actually. Yeah, shade auto smooth here, shade smooth for auto smooth there. And then you can kind of do what you want and rotate this thing. And personally, I think it's pretty cool the way it works, but I just add a material uh, to this, or at least tried to, and I can't do it. And I think for learning how a Boolean works and what it actually is doing, it's very important to see what's going on. And actually, I want that back. So I've been working on a little project here, and I'm going to sling this over here real quick. And this little project is actually turning into an add-on. Um, this looks like a little um, collage of different stuff because it is. So G and X, I'm just going to kind of move this over a little bit. And what this is, is a procedural geometry nodes based Boolean setup where all the wireframes are colored. The cuts are colored. You can come in uh, for like the sphere. Okay. Cause it has its own cutter. So you can see the actual depth of it and cavity can be on all day long and still not give you necessarily what you need. And with geometry nodes, you're not getting shading errors. I mean, it's really, really hard to screw up and get shading errors. All right, so the actual radius, like I've got it worked out where the radius of the cutters, we can change that and the wireframe. So if I come in here, I've got the wireframe radius for this one, 0 0.005, and I can change that so I can see through it. And if I want to, I can turn this off so I can get a nice clean render and or just apply the, um, the modifier and then this is maybe just the cuts that I wanted, right? So it works out pretty good. And so I'll slide that back over. I got this big old screen over here, get out of the way. So I'm going to show you guys how to make one of those real quick, okay? Uh, because this is Blender, and Blender is all about let's share our knowledge. All right, so take anything you want, doesn't matter, and we're going to shift a S and type in a mesh boolean, okay? You can drop that in and then control right slash on that. That is under the preferences and under add-ons, type in node, and then that's the node wrangler. Okay, you can check these on too if you wish. Now you can just pull this to the side, shift a S, type in cube, because we want to keep this whole thing procedural, right? We don't want to do a destructive workflow, not in this instance, because we don't have to, pun intended with instance. So cube or, or whatever you're cutting is going to go into mesh one. Okay, and then that's going to show back up. Shift A S. We can type in cylinder. All right, and cylinder is going to go into mesh two. That is your cutting object. And for the most part, that's just going to disappear on you. So, what you would want to do is increase the size potentially of your cube because it's no longer the size I made it. So, I'll take the X and the Y and I'm going to put that to 10. All right. And then I'm going to put this, well, I can leave that the way it is, or I can put that to like three, just to give it some thickness and disappear it again. Uh, but that's okay. So actually, I think I'll go down to like five. There we go. That's about what I had. All right. So from here, what you could do is you could increase the uh, depth. Well, the boolean is going to be, it's going to cut um, already. So we kind of got to set this thing up first. And we can't actually see what the boolean's doing. So like if we run this depth all the way up, you can kind of see where we are. And if you're wondering why that's all stretched out when it's a geometry nodes cylinder, as because shift A apply scale. And now it works. 
So now I want to be able to control this, but I can't see it. And it's really frustrating. So what I would do is shift A, drop in empty planes access. Let's scale it up and let's apply scale since I already forgot that one time. Let's click back here and let's actually pin that. And let's go over here to our node group and let's go ahead and pin this area. And so when we're clicking off, it won't change. And then we kind of see what we're doing a lot better, right? Makes sense. So I'll come over here and I'm gonna grab the empty and I'm gonna drop the empty in. Now I gotta do some stuff, okay? So Shift A S, we need a transform node. And the transform geometry is pretty darn important uh, because what you're gonna end up doing with this is you're going to end up tying in the object, which is our empty, through the transform. And that transform, because it, it connects, anything you connect in a transform, you could move in and out and it, it goes with the other mesh. It becomes that other mesh in essence. And so if I tie that in with the cube, it goes with the cube. So therefore, the very nature of the um, the empty in and of itself is that I can scale it easily and I can rotate it easily and do whatever I want to do with it. And if that is now controlling the Boolean object, then you kind of see where we're going with this. Now it's pretty simple. You can just drop that right in line. And now let's take our object info and we're going to tie that in location to translation. Pardon my contacts. Rotation to rotation and scale to scale. All right, so that's good. And now as we move this around, we now have literal control over the Boolean, which makes a lot more sense. And I kind of see it. Because if I'm over here playing around with a transform, that just is, that's, no, that's a hard no. All right, oh yeah, and by the way, smash that subscribe, smash that like if you find anything useful here and go check out my Gumroad. I got a lot of free add-ons. And also on my Blender Market, I've got some really cool exclusive add-ons. And yes, I am turning the uh, B-Box, which was the quote-unquote bull box, but I'm calling it the B-Box. I'm t uh, putting that into an add-on form and actually already have. And I will have that up on the Gumroad too, so you can grab that. And if you feel like supporting the channel, you can do that. All right, so enough of my advertisements. So what we want to do is we want to come over here and just after the mesh boolean, shift A, S, type in join, get a join geometry and throw that in right there. Now what we need to do is break up the line here from the transform so we can tell the wireframe what to look like, okay? So shift A, S, curve to mesh and drop that in, okay? Excuse me, shift A, S, mesh curve going backwards here but doesn't matter everything will disappear that's perfectly fine that's because we have not connected anything to communicate uh, what is actually going on with the the actual cutter we have not told it to do anything yet namely we have not uh, named a profile curve and we have not properly connected it to the joint yet so shift a s Curve, and I just put C U R V space C, and it's intuitive now. So it just like it knows what to select. Um, Blender 3.6 beta and 3.5 and up, they did that. And so now we could tie this in, but put 0 0.005 in there first, and then tie your curve into the curve profile. And it shouldn't lock up or do anything, but it also isn't going to, um, it's not going to actually do anything yet. It's actually going to be a little bit laggy because we've not finished it yet. All right, so now let's take this curve to mesh and let's slice that off because it's not working anyways. Let's take our transform and let's throw that into the mesh. Let's see, we get our boolean back. And let's take the curve to mesh and drop that in the join geometry. And voila, we've got a freaking wire, a wire frame. I love it. That is gorgeous. And now let's go ahead and take the group input uh, we could control a few things. We could control the verts. Well, I don't want to control the verts for the cube. That's kind of pointless. But I can control some stuff from down here. I can pull off like the radius. I can pull off the depth and pop all that over here. And then I can take the actual curved circle radius, which is our wireframe, and drop it right there. And I want to go over to the node 
Yeah, I want the node. Actually, I want the group. And so I want to go here and I want to name this, actually, wireframe radius. Because if you lose track of these things and you start getting a bunch of stuff in there, especially if you're new at this and you're like, I'm just going to throw everything in and connect it out to the node, which isn't necessary, um, that's going to really bite you in the butt. All right, so you could also pull out the empty if you didn't want it empty, and you could change that object. Uh, so if I like wanted to drop in, say, something like the sphere, kind of like I had before, and apply that scale, and then I could take the empty and actually delete that, and then if I name this, it comes back. And so that's super cool too, and it gives you a lot of access to kind of like see what's going on. So that's really important. That's the goal here is to uh, be able to see what you're doing and manipulate that. Now, after the curve to mesh, and I'm gonna switch over here to material preview, shift a S set M gets the set material. Let's drop that in. Let's go to materials. Let's, um, let's give this, let's give this just two materials. First material, we make it orange. I could do more. Second material, whatever you want to do. I haven't used green yet, so I'm going to use green. And so I'll go ahead and throw green on this, and that is the wireframe for the for the new bullion. I really like that; it's super cool. Um, so, and then up here for the base mesh, set mat right here. Boom. This could be yellow. Whatever you want to do. And then for the actual cutter itself. The, um, the cutter. Let's see, where are we going with this? Yeah, there we go. So that's the cutter, but I don't want it to be that color. I want that to be the orange. And so it's a little bright, but hey, whatever. I think that's really cool, and it's a very good way to see what you're doing. And I had that pinned, but I did actually manually switch off, so it did what it did. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple of the things. And if you don't want to convolute this, you can literally just Shift D that. Oops. Let me go back. I don't want to do that. I'm going to take this and Shift D and kind of bring this over maybe. And possibly just take some of these nodes and make them a little bit, uh, little bit neater, maybe, if I'm lucky. And then drop this in and be careful you don't overlap just because it's a material don't actually take it and go to that one by accident uh, these are all taken for these are spoken these are spoken for so if you don't have and i've got to understand why my um, tools actually just depart from me turn the pin off so that technically pinned the other thing okay gotcha so anyways and that that yellow is stealing my soul where did the yellow come from i don't even know where yellow came from that's hilarious all right blue it is i don't even know where that yellow came from but whatever you can change these as you see fit um, clean up your nodes make it look nice understand where everything is why it is try to clean things up and then once you're done with all that and you've got, you know, some organization, if you will, you could take your group output and input, isolate those, select these, control G, hit tab. Now you've got a nifty little node. And I've got another uh, group output here, but that's okay. And so at this point, and I could eliminate that actually pretty easily at this point, I could now shift D this and start making some more stuff. And I'm not even sure if this is going to work, but I could just throw this in here. And it's kind of got to have a, a transform geometry. So I could probably take this and put it in three. Okay, well, not three, but whatever. So anyways, now I've got another setup right here. And I don't have the other empty, actually. So let me just do that real quick. Shift A, planes axis, scale it up, apply, said scale, and Let's move that over there. Yeah, my contacts are about to fall out, so I'm having fun here. And I can grab the empty, and boom, that'll shove another thing over here. And then I can tab back into this if I want to change it. 
it's up to however you want to do it. Grab this material. Okay, those materials are tied together. That's awesome. So anyways, untie those materials. It won't be too difficult. Um, not going to worry about all that right now. And then this is actually controlling it, but I don't want it right there because it's not going to be in the right spot. So I need to actually grab that empty, which is going to be let go. There we go. Right here. And this transform is tied in, but I actually want to take the translation. And real quick, we will add one more thing. Let's throw a switch in right here. So if you pull everything back out of the node, right behind the transform, we've got a cylinder going in, but we don't have to. So let's put in a switch right here. And let's just type in UV or UV sphere. And let's dump that in. And what we can do is now drop this and pull the Boolean out for that. And now if we come over here to the modifier panel and I'll have to tab back out, grab the switch and connect it to the main node group. And now I've got a switch and I can actually go in and now select a UV sphere if it's in there. And for some reason that uh, radius just doesn't do it. Okay, so we'll go to like three and now you can control it and you can see it comes in rotated. It adopted uh, that rotation. Let me get this other empty out of there. I was trying something earlier. And so there you go, guys. That's about it. Appreciate you watching. Watching, I always say that. Thank you for watching. Watching, smash the subscribe, smash the like. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial lesson.